Hello Pirasikaba. Greetings to all the FDD attendees. Uh, this year my presence is mostly virtual, but anyway I think this uh, will not make my session any worse than it, than it should. Okay, let's start. My session is titled The Fiber Development, Where We Stand and Where We Go. It's uh, intended to represent the current state of the fiber development, the achievements made in the past two years, and uh, what are the project plans for the nearest future, including both short-term and long-term goals. What have been achieved in the past years? I mean primarily the past year and this year. Uh, we have released two maintenance releases that were security fixes for Fiber 2.1.5 update 1 and Fiber 2.5.2 uh, update 1. They contained only one security bug fix, but quite important uh, it required us to release uh, these two versions separately. Then we have released Fiber 2.1.6 sub release. Actually, it's going to be the last um, sub release for the Fiber 2.1 series. Currently, we are waiting for your feedback regarding this release. Uh, and if no critical regressions are reported, uh, then uh, maybe in October, November, we will uh, declare officially about the end of life for the Fiber 2.1 release series. So there will be no post releases after this one. And finally, a long awaited bug fix release Fiber 2.5.3 uh, have also been released this summer. It includes uh, a few improvements, but lots of bug fixes, including both stability fixes and uh, performance uh, improvements and uh, so on. So, uh, some of them are quite important, so please seriously consider upgrading your production databases to these point release. Fiber 2.5 series will be continued supported for the uh, nearest years. Uh, so you may expect other bug fixes, uh, bug fix releases soon, but at the moment this one is the latest one and the most stable one. And what about the Fiber 3 development? We have released Alpha 1 version, then Alpha 2 version. Both of them have introduced almost all features that we intended to put into the Fiber 3 release. So with alpha versions you can preview the promised features, test them and provide us with a feedback. Actually they are mostly completed and very few of new features can be expected soon. We are finalizing this version and uh, Beta 1, which is coming quite soon. Uh, we expected uh, to have it released this month, but uh, it seems that uh, it will appear in September. Beta 1 will introduce a few more features and improvements, but uh, the list of the expected features is actually ending. So Beta 1 and maybe Beta 2 will be the last uh, releases with something new. And also starting with Beta 1 we are starting to finally figure out all the troubles, uh, resolve all the known issues, address all the problems reported so far. 
So beta 1 is expected to be stable enough to be tested in a quite, under a quite serious load. What features have been introduced in Alpha 2? There were quite many improvements but only a few major features. One of them is a database linger option that can be specified at the optionally at the database level to, and it allows the Firebird engine to keep the, date, the internal database connection to the database. Uh, in other words it keeps all the locks, database level locks active, it keeps the page cache hot and uh, all of this allows you to faster reconnect to the database. This is especially important for uh, web applications that often connect and disconnect but still require quite effective uh, retrieval of data even if it's the first connection to the database. This feature allows to minimize the respond time when the database is firstly connected by users. Another option is the uh, ability to specify user-defined properties for database users. For every uh, database user stored in either the database itself, your database, or in the security database, you can specify a number of key value sets of user-defined properties and store them whatever your application needs for the database users. Another uh, feature is uh, start with and restart with clauses for identity columns and regular sequences that allow you to restart them not from one but from whatever value you need. And also a few optimizer improvements have been made especially in the area of uh, new algorithms implemented in Firebird 3, namely the hash joins, full outer joins and so on. Some tuning has been performed for these features and uh, de it delivered quite uh, better performance for these operations. Uh, now about beta 1. As I said, it's expected very soon. One of the major features is the DDL permissions. It allows you to specify what operations with database schema are allowed and uh, which operations are not allowed for particular users. It allows you to restrict creation of new objects in the database this is especially important because as you know Firebird could not prevent any user from creating his tables and then populating the tables until the disk is out of space and so on so actually it's a security measure but uh, existing database objects can also be manipulated with DDL permissions this feature has been ported from the RED database with the help of RedSoft developers and finally with a few modifications as compared with the RedSoft implementation it appears in Firebird it's already available for testing in snapshot builds and it will be present in beta 1 the next feature is a set role statement uh, which allows you to override the current role at runtime you may connect with one role and then change it to another role without reconnecting. JBack has been improved to optionally skip some specific tables uh, when performing a backup, so include, uh, not including them into the backup file and thus saving time for both backup and restore. If you know, for example, that these tables are never modified, some kind of static dictionaries or something like that. Another new feature is an ability to map operating system users and groups to the database users and roles. When you perform an operating system authentication, all these mappings could help to properly uh, identify you your operating system user inside the database. 
the monitoring feature has been improved too it introduces a number of new monitoring tables and uh, quite many of new uh, performance counters in the existing monitoring tables uh, more details about that will be available in the release notes cursors in PSQL in procedure SQL uh, now can be referenced as pseudo variables of the record type for example if you have a cursor explicitly named I mean both explicit cursors like declare cursor but also four loops in PSQL that can be identified with a cursor name you know yeah for select something something as cursor some name and uh, then inside the scope of this cursor you can reference its fields uh, via the cursor name and the field name uh, you may uh, notice that uh, something like that exists in Oracle for example now such a feature available in Fiber 2 just with a slightly different syntax more native to Fiber users and another new feature is the uh, optimization of the remote protocol currently the protocol is not really bad as some people think and it has been uh, already optimized in Firebird 2.1 to some extent but uh, the major problem still persisting is that the traffic of the protocol is uh, quite wide uh, no compression is applied and uh, a lot of redundant data is transmitted for example uh, even columns that are known to be nulls are transmitted and they full declared length so well, this is the first area of the protocol optimization to avoid transmitting nulls uh, and also optimize the way of specific fields uh, and strings are transmitted this is also introduce one more possible option for improvement is a better prefetch size calculation why it becomes important now because priorly the Firebird uh, remote protocol code has dealt uh, with the fixed length of uh, records to be transmitted so the prefetch buffer size calculation was quite easy but with a kind of runtime compression to avoid nulls to shorter strings and so on the record length becomes varying so uh, the current prefetch size calculation algorithm doesn't work so a uh, better calculation is needed to guarantee that uh, the prefetch buffer is entirely full that is fit with uh, full of records before transmitting to reduce number of round trips another uh, improvement in this area is the early prefetch request currently uh, records are sent as batches so many records are sent across the wire at once but the client requests asynchronously the next batch of records uh, only when it's halfway processed the prior, prior batch, previous batch but with slow network connections I primarily mean internet connection uh, it's uh, really faster to ask the server for the next batch of records uh, before even starting to process the current batch the earlier we ask the engine for the next batch the uh, better response we will give uh, we will uh, take on slow uh, networks also not only nulls transmitting could be optimized but some 
kind of record packing or compression could also be possible. Uh, as you know, records are compressed on disk in a quite efficient manner. Some kind of run length encoding is used. Something like that could be uh, applied to the network protocol as well. However, uh, this improvement uh, would slightly conflict with the another feature, the overall protocol compression. When the all packets are compressed, not only uh, the record data sent, but also control words, um, BLR, uh, descriptors and so on. So actually, uh, if we speak about the generic protocol compression, it could override any improvements made for the record-only packing. So this is the area we need uh, a bit more to think about how to implement it properly. The protocol compression has been suggested for Fiber 3, but it's not yet implemented, and I cannot promise it will be implemented in Fiber 3. So actually uh, we need to uh, figure out how to do it best. I was talking about beta 2. Uh, actually, it will contain a few improvements that are not ready yet for beta 1, but we cannot delay beta 1 anymore. So they will come into beta 2. And beta 2 will be the last beta version, which is absolutely uh, feature complete. No more changes will come after beta 2. Currently we are hardly discussing the new API and some issues that arise recently with the new API. So we need to finally make a decision on how it will look like. And this is the primary issue to be decided for beta 2. Uh, we are willing to remove the current transaction counter limit that require you to back up and restore the database every uh, a few billion transactions. We have uh, this implemented for one of the customers, so we have a patch implementing this. We just need to review it and maybe modify for Fiber 3. As you Perhaps no Fiber 3 introduces bidirectional cursors in PSQL, and now the same implementation should be surfaced in DSQL. It's not a major feature, just uh, an API adjustments for the currently available feature. And uh, another patch that we already have implemented, it's ready for quite a long of time. It's an ability to validate the database online without requiring an exclusive database access. It will be also included in beta 2. What other features could be applied to beta 2, but we do not guarantee that? Predefined roles, for example, system roles to access monitoring tables, to perform backup and so on that could be granted to various users. We were willing to have in this feature in Fiber 3, but it's not yet implemented. Uh, actually, we hoped that uh, it exists in Redsoft database, uh, but uh, they don't have a complete implementation either, so most likely this feature will be postponed. And also uh, one of the features that could be done, but it will be postponed if uh, will be really hard on uh, the schedule, if we will not have time to properly test it, is a denser on disk record compression that uh, mostly allows to uh, more efficiently compress long series of uh, nulls or zeros inside the record. Uh, mostly it means better compression of null or just short varchar strings that were declared with a very uh, large length. 
what other features will not appear in Fiber 3. I mean those features that were promised in the roadmap but we didn't have enough time to implement them and we don't want to, release, uh, to defer the Fiber 3 release more than now. Aggregated privileges for roles. It means ability grant to grant one role to another role and have the privileges internally aggregated. Uh, feature of user groups, also no implicit roles when you specify that some user have permissions of different roles, but you don't have to specify that role at the connection time. New data access algorithms like hash aggregation, like uh, using of the hash join for left outer joins, and so on. It, it, uh, it also has been postponed. Fiber 3 will not have value distribution histograms to help the optimizer to choose better plans in the case of skewed uh, distribution of values. And uh, one of the features not really promised uh, but available as a patch but not really tested good on all the platforms is the uh, ability to check timing for different operations inside the engine. It will be deferred to the next Fibert version. Of course, I apologize that some of our promises will not be delivered for Fiber 3, but as you know, this release is really late already and we do not want to delay it even more. What about the release schedule for Fiber 3? As I said, Beta 1 is coming, Beta 2 will follow quite closely, maybe in a couple of months and we still hope to have the release candidate 1 available this year. No new features will be available after beta 2. We will not have any regression bug fixes, oh sorry, of course regression uh, bug fixes will be available in release candidates, but uh, bug fixes for old bugs will not be performed in the release candidates, unlike our practice in the other releases. And the big question is how fast the release candidate 1 will come into the final release. Nobody knows that. Everything depends on your testing. Regressions are possible. We have already fixed a lot of them. We are quite satisfied with the code stability now, but until lots of public testing is performed, uh, we cannot, of course, say that the release is okay. So your help is greatly appreciated. Current expectation for the final release is the first quarter of the next year. I really hope it will be doable. A few words about why Fiber 3 release was delayed so much. Why the schedule has been shifted a few times. There are a number of reasons. Some of them are technical and others are mostly organizational or in infrastructure ones. The engine architecture has been significantly reworked and uh, the API, uh, the new API we introduce needs mapping to the old API and to the remote protocol and to the engine internals and so on. So really a lot of changes have been made and uh, some of them now start to demonstrate some issues that we didn't expect earlier. Again, coming to the conclusion that the earlier people start to test new features, the earlier they get fixed and the earlier we can release. But actually nobody testing 
uh, the engine before, for example, beta versions or maybe even release candidates. This is our permanent problem in all the Firebird versions. As I said, a lot of code has been refactored. Uh, a lot of code has been uh, written from scratch. Uh, some major changes were performed, and of course, all of, of these uh, cause regressions. And uh, many of them are easy to find, but some of them are hard to find. And uh, some of them maybe will still exist in beta and so on. So, uh, white testing is really uh, required and would be appreciated. And uh, all the changes performed touched it at the SMP scalability that allowed better concurrency inside the agent start to demonstrate different race conditions. Of course, uh, the better the engine process concurrency, the more chances for quite uh, unusual races to happen. And uh, it really happens. We have fixed a lot of race conditions already, but I cannot promise that uh, there are not new race conditions still unknown to us. This is quite uh, maybe easy to understand for the multi-threading developers, but uh, maybe not really understandable by the end users. But the testing is again is a key to uh, the better code quality in the bet in the faster release. Uh, luckily, we now have a dedicated uh, QA persons that work with the load testing, high load testing, and uh, they help really uh, provided us with many solutions to these kind of problems. But not only technical issues exist, there are also organizational issues. The 5.3 version was so much uh, should I say not really not only promised but announced many times uh, first of all it was the SMP feature then uh, some other major features were announced uh, then many conferences come that we are listing that we, are, we want to do that and that and that and that so actually when we came to the development and uh, resolved all the primary tasks we were left with loads of many promises that we still need to do but the time is gone and uh, we really don't have much time to implement many of them so quite a lot of them were implemented but some of them were postponed if we would decided to deliver all the promises it would mean one more maybe year of delay this is unacceptable we were also always featuring the schedule driving on new features our uh, fiber was always a fiber uh, roadmaps and release plans we are already uh, always feature driven but uh, as you see with too many features planned it becomes really hard to deliver all the promises and also about the quality the Vulcan experience uh, showed us that if you promise too much and perform a lot of code refactoring and code changes and even if you reach the primary goals other problems still persist and the engine may become unstable and uh, 
Many bugs may still reside waiting for developers to fix them and so on. We didn't want to deliver unstable code. So we had to polish up and uh, find any troubles and uh, double test all the problematic aspects. This also takes lots of time, of course. What we are trying to change now. By now, I mean starting after Fiber 3. What the project has agreed on regarding the new game rules for releases. Starting with the past point releases 2.1.6 and 2.5.3 we didn't have any release candidates anymore for point releases and we try to minimize the human resources required for QA for point releases they don't have much changes actually and uh, they never require testing of the installer for example so our set of tests our automated test suite is really enough to release any point release and uh, make sure it doesn't contain any regressions it allows us to faster release point releases and to uh, guarantee that they don't take lots of our time so they can be scheduled without problems and without affecting other releases now after fiber 3 we have uh, decided to go for the time-based schedule not the feature-based with the following uh, schedule we will try to do two point releases every year as I said it shouldn't be hard for us with the automated QA we start to follow the two years development cycle and we intend to release one major version per every year and a half. How it's going to happen? As I said, beta 2 for Fiber 3 will have the last set of features. No, anything uh, new is not going to appear in the release candidates. So we may fork the new major version immediately after the last beta. Uh, before that uh, we were forking the new version after the first release candidate. Actually it gives us at least two months of additional time for the new development. Initial development will overlap with the prior release cycle in the beta and release candidate stages so for example if we release fiber 3 beta 2 in november for example and the release candidate in december and uh, maybe the second release candidate in january and final release in february just as an example then fiber 4 version development will start in November and uh, will continue happening in, uh, s in parallel with the Fiber 3 RC cycle because the, is the, uh, obviously the release candidate cycle does not require many human efforts it's mostly about fixing regression bugs and uh, it's really uh, doable to schedule them uh, simultaneously. Two years of the development cycle with uh, about six 
months overlap provides 18 months, one year and a half uh, between major releases. This is our goal we will try to achieve with Firebird 4. And uh, time will show how good we will be in that. Not only major releases are possible, we still uh, leave us a chance to deliver minor releases in the meantime, but only if they will not significantly affect the schedule. So it means that new API, no new API changes are allowed in minor releases, no ODS inc incompatibility is allowed, uh, no hard features that uh, re can really be hard to backport are allowed, only some improvements, simple features and like that could be backported and released as a separate MENA release. We do not schedule them explicitly. We just figure out in the meantime of the major version development that we now have a chance, for example, to release some MENA version. And we do that. It's possible that no minor releases will be available. It's also possible. Time will show how it's going to happen. As I said, currently we name the new release as version 4. It's a kind of code name at the moment. It can be changed, but so far it's referred to version 4. Accordingly to the new release schedule, it should be available in uh, two years after this year. What new features will be in this release? It's really too early to lead them. Currently we are in the stage of collecting the ideas. Uh, is if you follow the fiber development mailing list you could notice the appropriate thread created in April to collect the ideas for the new features uh, for the new version. Also we closely follow number of votes in the bug tracker for improvements and features and based on both ideas raised by our users and uh, represented in the tracker via the voting and uh, mainly uh, maybe mentioned by the project sponsors these features will be combined composed in the single list assigned the priorities and then it will be published of the web website in the form of the planning board when you could see what features are the top priority ones which features are the second priority ones who are responsible for that features what are the schedule for the area of that feature and the progress is being made what is closed, what is in progress, what is postponed uh, this planning board will be available uh, later this year Given the feedback we had already collected, here is the list of the top voted features in the tracker. This information is uh, taken from the bug tracker. Longer object identifiers, SQL schemas, remote protocol compression, built-in replication, external database links, uh, support for time zones, and uh, scheduled tasks or jobs that can be run inside the database. You can see uh, this list as well as uh, less voted features in the tracker yourself. What are priorities of the fiber developers that are not directly represented in the tracker? Here is a short list, optimizer improvements and uh, 
auto-updatable statistics, histograms, then transactional indices, faster garbage collection in indices, index-only scans, batch operations, multi-record operations in SQL and API, uh, better conformance to the SQL standard, and better support of very large databases, and better scalability. This is, uh, of course, just a short list. There are many other priorities, and of course, we will need to reach some kind of consensus between the users' wishes, developer wishes, sponsors' wishes. How the decision making is going to happen, you can see. We collect requests for feature enhancements from all the categories around Firebird. Then the list will be composed and uh, priorities are assigned by the project admins. We will explicitly separate mandatory and optional features. Mandatory features will have to be implemented in Firebird 4 and optional features uh, can be postponed if the timing is gone. And all this information will be published at the website on the planning board. Every feature that does not meet the schedule will be discussed for cutoff or postponed for further releases. It will be discussed in the one by one case individually. This is mostly all I wanted to say you about the Firebird plans and uh, progress being made currently and uh, scheduled for the nearest future. We will be doing our best to deliver Fiber 3 as soon as possible and uh, to follow our intentions, our new release strategy for Fiber 4 release. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask now and I'll try to answer them. Thank you.